Reste Ponderosa. You're on it. Yeah. What's your name, Bagrat? My name's Horse Cartwright. My my pa owns this land. You're Benjamin Cartwright's boy. That's right. Can I help you? How could you help me? I ain't stuck in the mud. You're a mountain man, ain't you? Why you get that funny hat, son? I don't think it's funny. <laughs> Mister, you're gonna pick that hat up. Uh, you going to make me pick up that hat? You get out off that horse. Well, Big Mouth, what you going to do to make me? to get you out now, my nephew. Nephew? I am your uncle, Gunnar. Long time since you've seen me, sonny, yeah? since the last time I see you. Twenty years? Hey, you got a touch of snow around your ears like me. Gunnar Bergstrom! <laughs> what a wonderful surprise! What are you doing around this part of the world? Oh, I go lots of places, you know that, Ben. Uh, who are you? I'm Adam, Gunnar. You don't remember me, do you? Ah, little Adam. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> we got a, another brother now, little Joe, but... He's all visiting some friends, a female friend. Muna, well, where are you headed? Oh, who knows? Dakota, Canada. A few compadres followed this old state to the north to seek their fortune. Uh, compadres, huh? Yeah, men like myself. Men with no ties, no roots. We make camp in the mountains. How come they didn't ride down with you, Uncle Jim? Because they ain't so sociable as me, that is why. I ride all these miles just to see my relatives. Uh... Maybe my sister's husband invite me for supper, huh? Well, uh, please forgive me and all the excitement. Of course, of course, you'll have supper with us. Come on in. Ah, uh, good. Maybe I'll take a bath, too, huh? I think maybe I don't smell too good at supper. <laughs> <laughs> I eat different from you, yeah? You, you eat a lot, that's right. I think a pig have better table manners than me. But I spent my life in Brussels de Dias, in the arms of God, under the stars like an animal. You sure have been lots of places, ain't you? Since I last seen your father, I've been in 26 countries, across five oceans. 26 countries and five oceans. You hear that, Adam? I sure did. 
That was uh, an Indian lance you were carrying, wasn't it? Got big sticker? Yeah. I got that from a Comanche chief. He didn't have no more use for it. Maybe because he was dead, yeah? <laughs> you, uh, you fight the Comanches, Uncle Gunnar? I fight anybody. You ought to know that by now, my nephew. Gunnar, you, uh, say you, uh, fought the Comanches. You ever trade with them? Well, then we don't fight. My compadres and I, we trade. Why you ask? I was, I was just wondering if you ever ran across a bunch of, uh, renegade buffalo hunters. The Macheros. Yeah, yeah, I, I have heard of them. Pretty wild bunch, I hear. Now they raid the white settlements and then they trade off the goods to the Comanches. Is that so? Maybe, maybe that's why they call them Comancheros. I, uh, I never seen none of them. Hello? Uh, there is my compadre. Sorry, senors. I thought maybe I found you under this roof also. What you doing here, Vaca? I think it's very cold on the mountain sleeping, and my serape is very thin. I thought maybe... Uh... Oh, well, we have some extra blankets you could use. He don't need none. All right. I'll get them. Oh, you must be a very rich man to own such a magnificent hacienda. You get back to camp, Vaca. Pronto. And you also... When you're coming back to camp, huh? I go when I am ready, Vaca. Maybe you like it so much here with your relatives, you're going to stay, huh? Oh, gracias. I'm going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> I very much enjoy meeting you, Rancheros. Maybe Happy Man or Vaca will meet you again sometime, huh? Adios. Adios. Sorry, Doc, would come here. Oh, that's all right. I got to keep a strong hand on that one. Well, the food was good, Benjamin. I go now. So soon? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Paul, how come you can't stay in that extra bedroom? There ain't no use in him going back out on that mountain. Well, of course he can. He'll sleep the night here. Oh, no, no. I oh. don't I don't think so. No. Of course you will. Oh, come on. up there. Yeah, we'd be glad to have you. Where would I sleep? Right there in that extra bedroom. You make yourself at home. There we are. All right. Ah, good. I, uh, I don't sleep in a fine house for a long time. If I snore, you pound on the door, yeah? yeah. <laughs> we'll pound hard. <laughs> good night. Well, that's quite an uncle we've got, Hoss. <laughs> sure is. Sure hate to have him get riled up at me. You know, he reminds me of an old Viking. Yeah. I'll bet you Uncle Gunnar would like being called a Viking. The Vikings were ruthless raiders and killers. Not much better than the Comancheros. Come on, we've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Let's get to bed. Last time I see you was at the funeral. Yes. Yes, that's right. She was a good woman, my sister. Yes. She was a good woman. A wonderful wife. We had much fun, Inger and me, when we were young. All I had in my mind was dreams of glory and gold. It's good to dream when you are young, Benjamin. Oh, you can dream when you're older, too. Yeah, but now when the fur is flying and the iron is hot, there is no time to dream. No, the fur was always flying with you. I remember you as a boy. <laughs> always had to have a, a new pot of devil's brew every day. Not used as a boy all the time. All the time, I lead a good, strong life. A man's life. Keep the rewards and pay the piper when he calls. That's Gunnar Borgstrom. 
You ever, you ever lonely? Lonely? Lonely for what? Companionship? Woman? I never, never lacked for the company of women. <laughs> you, uh, you never got married? Mary Gunnar? I was not cut out for fathering and farming, Benjamin. I had to move, move with the turn and tide of things. Not sit on my backside like a Yucatan turtle. Well, I, I never exactly considered myself a Yucatan turtle. Oh, you ain't, Benjamin, you ain't. You got a, a good ranch here, fine boys. It's, it's use the Almighty didn't cut us all in the shape of plowmen. You, you can't plant a roving man's feet in the earth. Maybe that's because a, a roving man doesn't want to stand still long enough to take a look at himself. I ain't a young man now, Benjamin. And I got no regrets for the sins I commit in this world. I see what I want and I take it. And I'm not going out on my back a begging forgiveness from nobody. Come here. Why did you come here? I come to see my sister's boy. My blood. Maybe... Maybe I don't get no other chance. I am tired now, Benjamin. I... I go to sleep now. Yeah. Benjamin, you have a dream, Benjamin. Well, no, sometimes. I always have the same dream. It's night. Black and velvet it is. And there's a warm August wind blowing. And it's on a great ship I am. I'm flying with that wind over a smooth sea, and chasing the wisp of a small boat. And it always seems to, to hold its lead far ahead of me. It's so dark it is. So dark I can't make it up. Baka, my friend, did you find El Oso? See, yeah, I found him. Visiting with his relatives. Stuffing his face with good food. While we sit up here and eat dry bread. When do we move? Gunnar say we would find Pat Peking here. Promises. Promises, that's all he does anymore. Promises. It has been a month since we have made a good raid. I trust Gunnar. He's been a good leader to us. Ah, he's an old woman. Warming himself by the fire. Is that the kind of leader you want? I do not care who leads her. Just so we raid and get rich. We will raid, Dusak. I promise you. And we will get rich, too. And the first fat goose we will pluck will be the Ponderosa. Good last night? <laughs> I sleep good. I sleep good. That mattress is chuck plum full of real goose feathers. You know? Goose feathers? I got off them goose feathers. I sleep on the floor. I ain't so used to goose feathers as you. I reckon we are getting a little soft around here at that. <laughs> hey, how about me showing you around Ponderosa before you leave? We ain't had much of a chance to get to know each other. Well, it ain't every day that a man just finds an uncle. Sure, Sonny. I guess I got the time. Maybe, uh... I don't come back again so soon, yeah? 
Yes, sir. I sure would like you to meet little Joe before you leave, too. He's over at the McLean's helping him build a fence. He ought to be back any time. Aren't you even going to stop work long enough to have a drink of water? Carrie, just looking at you is more refreshing than anything you've got in that bucket. But I can use some of that, too. Your flattery, little Joe, is exceeded only by your ability to build a fence. Seems that you walked all the way out of here. Why don't you stay a while? Let me show you what I've done. Oh, I know what you've done. Uncle Abe has been singing your praises all morning. He thinks you're just about the finest thing there ever was. And, uh... How about you? What do you think? Well, I told you I was glad you came over to help out, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Is that the only reason you're glad? You know it isn't. It's just that I want you to know I think it's wonderful the way you and your pa and Adam and Hoss have helped Uncle Abe and me since we've been here. Oh, it's pretty easy to help a man like your uncle. Especially when he's got a beautiful niece to say thanks for. I think you're a flatterer, little Joe. Just like your pa. Well, we try to please. Can't you ever be serious? Now, you know how proud we are, your uncle. It's done a lot more with this place than we ever thought possible. Because you Cartwrights have helped him, little Joe. He was so discouraged when he came here. The drought and the wind and crop failures. He had such big dreams. Well, I think his biggest dream was raising you after your folks died. He's done a real fine job. Hasn't been easy for him. Sometimes I feel I've been a burden. Hey. I'm not letting him hear you say that. He's proud as a peacock of you. I'd say with good cause. I feel guilty about you working around here so much. Mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't mind becoming the permanent fence fixer around here. Ain't that the prettiest little pond you ever saw? Yeah. It's a good place. A quiet place. Pretty as a pond I never see. Uncle Gunner. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. You know, I was just a little feller when my mother died. I don't remember much about her. Paul's tried to tell me everything he could, but well, I, I thought maybe you being her brother, you could, you could add something to it. Well, he didn't get along so good. I, I was a wild one, and uh, she didn't like that so much. But she had a soft heart, that girl. Paul says she sure was pretty. Great big blue eyes and blonde hair. Uh, blonde as the snows of Dollar. Now. But it ain't good to talk about the dead, son. You, you can't bring nobody back once they're gone. No, I reckon you can't. I guess that's why I want to know as much about you as I can before you have to leave. You want to know about me. You wouldn't like what I had to tell. Maybe I wouldn't. Then again, maybe I would. I think you wouldn't. Uncle Gunnar, what you going to do in Canada? Canada? Yeah, that's where you're going, ain't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I go there. Why don't you stay here with us? Because I ain't no Yucatan turtle. That's why. You know what? I got to move with the tide and turn of things. So I, I don't have to take a good look at myself. Yeah, this is, this is a good place, Sonny. It's quiet here. Well, you fellas have a good ride? Sure did, Paul. I took him out to the lake. Yeah? That's a pretty good mud puddle you got up there, Benjamin. <laughs> hey, what you doing there? I'm making a new batch of soap. We make our own out of hog lard and lye water. A little bit strong, but it sure will get you clean. Well, what do you think of the Ponderosa? Well, I think if you work hard, you can have what you want, too. Gunner, you have what you want? 
Yeah. I got what I want. Uh, pa, Horst and I got to get at that hay, and I think I'll ride over to McLean's and uh, remind little Joe that he has work around here, too. Oh, he'll be back pretty soon. Well, I got to go now, boys. You got the fine ranch here, Benjamin, and fine boys. Gunnar, it was wonderful seeing you again. Wonderful. Good dog, Benjamin. Goodbye, Uncle Gunnar. Good dog, Adam. Bye, Uncle Gunnar. I wish you could have met little Joe. Well, them compadres, they vamos without me if I don't show up. And I got to hear other saddles creaking besides my own. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't remember giving no orders to move out. You didn't give it. I did. You think you're a man enough to be the padrone of these command Charles Vaca? Sure. I ain't got no relatives. What does that mean? When a man got ties, he gets soft in the belly. I ain't got no ties. No. His hombres, eh? Eat your dust all the way from Teos. Because they believe what you tell them. They begin to wonder now if uh, what you tell them is the truth. When I get ready to strike, I will tell you. Come on, chairs, they're beginning to think. Maybe uh, you're getting a yellow streak. The bear makes a big growl, huh? But how sharp are your claws? Is there also a, a man of strength and power? Or is he a tired old viejo who should lie down and die? He ain't dead yet, Vaca. Prove it. A big plunder is down there. The Ponderosa. The Ponderosa would not be easy to loot. There are too many men there. It would be dangerous. I spit on them. What is danger to the common sheriffs? Aye, every man of Vaca, I tell you, we are going to raid the Ponderosa. I give the orders here. Why did you bring us to this valley, huh? Why? So we could sit still in the middle of all this wealth while you go visiting your parientes? There are other ranches in this valley. We seen one in the foothills we could take with our hands tied. So you are tired of waiting, yeah? Your blood is hot. You wait for the word of your padron. Well, I give you that word. We raid that ranch in the foothills. <laughs> I hope you're real hungry, little Joe, because I've baked an apple pie. Uh-uh, apple pie, huh? Don't you like it? Why, it's my favorite dish. Vamanos, amigos! your sweetheart, my little mosquito, huh? If he ain't, uh, maybe I can be your sweetheart, huh? <laughs> What's your name, muchacho? What's it to you? I want to put on your tombstone. I don't want you to lie in a grave, which is unmarked. Now, the name's Cartwright. Joe Cartwright. Be sure to put it in big letters so everybody can read it. You say you got no ties, eh? Well, maybe we'll take one of your relatives for hostage, eh? I mean, you say you don't care about them, right? He ain't no relative of mine. He say his name Joe Cartwright. Get up, Sonny. Uh -huh. 
I don't know no your Cartwright. Tie them up. We take them back to camp. Andale, Prato! Be scared of. They're gonna let us go pretty soon. No, they won't. They'll kill us. Like they killed Uncle Abe and Mr. Krager. Carrie, don't start thinking that way. If they were gonna kill us, they would have done it back there. I'm so tired, Joe. I wish I could sleep. You like some coffee, though? I'm sorry if you're not very comfortable. Save your breath. You're gonna need it when half this country comes looking for us. Why are they looking for you? Something special? Your papa's a very rich man, huh? Importante. Yeah, importante. Yeah, enough to have the sheriff and 200 mountain men down on your back. <laughs> I do not think your papa do that, muchacho. Your papa got too many relatives to worry about. What relatives? Him. He's your papa's brother-in-law. You're a liar. No, I tell you the truth, muchacho. That old bear, he's your uncle. He's visiting with your papa. Or you were visiting with your sweetheart. <laughs> you sure you don't want some cafecito? Get the men to lighten the wagons. We move out tomorrow. I don't want any junk slowing us down. What's so, all? Why don't you tell him who you are, huh? He said you were my uncle. Maybe I am. What difference would it make? Ask him. Ask him if he ain't Gunnar Borgström. Gunnar Borgström? What's his uncle? <laughs> Wait! No, you ain't no uncle of mine. You couldn't be. You're a filthy, murdering skunk. You've got a big mouth like your brother Haas. I just can't believe it. He's been talking about you ever since we were kids. I don't need any of his talk. No, that's right, you don't. The only thing you need is a box big enough to bury you in. been with El Oso a long time. I see something in his eyes that ain't been there before. Like what? Like pain. But there is no wound, no blood. Maybe sick. See, with the sickness which drains a man of his fire. He's dying, my compadres. He's dying of conscience and remorse. Soon he will crawl into his hole and Shut off the world behind him. Then why would we not just wait and see? Because it is dangerous to those around him. And because I want to see him squirm before he dies. Squirm in his belly, in his heart. To sir. Find me a cool labor. A snake? With an angry face and death in his mouth. And also does not like snake, you know that. I know that very well. We're going to have some fun. Maybe we watch the big bear dance tonight. Ah. Ah. Are you alive? Just barely. Well, let's get him inside. Hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> 
I bring you His Majesty, the King of the Chamiso Bush. This act. Bet you five dollars he goes north when he comes out of that bag. And I bet you. I, I, I bet you five dollars he goes south. <laughs> this act. Where'd you get that chicken snake? Hey, don't let him out of that bag or we'll all be dead chickens. He's no chicken snake. He's 100% rattlers. And he can spit and strike like the devil. <laughs> Sir. Well, this cut right don't mean anything to you, huh? Look at him, my compadres. Sweating like a stuck pig. I ain't taking no more orders from this old woman. These orders are to protect his parientes, not us. From now on, I give the orders here. Look like I shoot the wrong snake. This snake can strike like the devil, too. There are any more snakes among the Command Charles. Gunner wants to know about them. No? All right, then. Go to sleep. We move out at dawn. Thank you. 
you should have seen that place. Old man Traeger was dead. Everything was ransacked, looted, busted was up. Was there any sign of Joe and Carey? Any signs of where he was working, Pop? Oh, if it was Indians, they sure didn't leave no sign. They couldn't have been Indians. They needed wagons to haul away as much stuff as they did. What difference does it make who it was? They've got Joe and Carey, haven't they? <laughs> it's all right. Abe, it's Ben Cartwright. Take it easy now. Everything's all right. There. Abe, who was it? The leader was on big black horse. Old man with a beard. Big Mexican. <laughs> Abe. Abe. Is he carrying an Indian lance? said he was born like an animal under the stars. Boy, it just don't make sense. The other day up in the lake... Don't try to understand it. You just can't look that deep into a man's soul to see what he's really like. Let's go get little Joe. Adam, get one of the men to look after Mr. McLean. Rocks are hard, nothing to make a track on it. Oh, I think we ought to split up. Oh, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Must be a lot of them. The only way we'll find them, Pop. Besides that, it'll be a lot quieter. All right. On one condition. None of us tries to get Joe out of there by himself. Now, they must have camped somewhere around here for the night. All right, whoever finds that camp, we don't do anything about it. We, we meet on top of that ridge. But an hour from now, then we decide what to do. Agreed? My ankle. Keep running. I can't leave it. I said Joe. keep running. Now, muchacho.
Everything's going to be all right. Now, where's Joe? Oh! Carrie! Where is he? He's dead, Oz. I'm dead! What are you talking about? I saw it. He shot him. Carrie, are you sure? Where did it happen? He's back there. In some rock. Come on. Oh, no, Oz. Carrie, now you listen to no. me. I ain't gonna leave you here, and I ain't turning back. Now you come on, you hear? Come on. I used to lay in bed at night when I was a little boy, wondering where my uncle Gunner was, wondering what he's doing. I told you you. Not like what I had to tell. You killed little Joe. And uncle or no uncle, I'm gonna kill you. Oh, no, Hoss, no. You stay out of this. I thought they done killed you, boy. No, not this time. It was your uncle, Hoss. Yeah, I know. He saved our lives. And then he helped us get away. I tried to tell you, Hoss. Amigos! I'm going to kill you, amigos. Don't move. I know the old man pretty well. When I kill you, he will die, too. <laughs> Baga! Don't move, woman! Don't move! You move, I will kill them! Take your choice, Baga! Them or me! I just didn't understand, Uncle Gunner. Don't you go getting stuck in the mud, Sonny. Sometimes it's... It's not so easy to get out. Don't talk. I'm not asking forgiveness from, from nobody, you hear? What I done, I done because I fought and won it. It's the strength in my hand. Yes, sir. Forgive me, Sonny. Boss.
Sheriff tells me the Matera's pulled out. Boss is after him. Uncle Gunnar liked this place. Said it was peaceful, quiet. Said it was a good place. I guess that's what he was always looking for. Peace and quiet. A little boat that was always just out of his reach. What little boat? No. Boat he was always dreaming about. Paul. You said that it wasn't possible for a man to see inside another man deep enough to know what he was really like. I think I did. Just before he died. Come on, he, he wouldn't want us to mourn over him. No. No, I reckon he wouldn't attack. Just wasn't that sort of man, was he? <laughs> 